Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Hogan's Alley. Today, as we do from time to time, we go back and look at some books that uh, have been written about Ben Hogan. We compare what is said in their book with what I teach, what I've learned from John Schley, and also going back to uh, Hogan's book, Five Fundamentals. So, in this book, the main premise is about what uh, VJ uh, Trulio calls Trulio calls the uh, missing piece or the uh, the missing puzzle piece, as I should say. Um, it's a secret puzzle, no less. But anyway, what the main premise is is it talks about the hip turn, and we'll we'll get into it. I'll show you exactly what it is, and then from there we'll proceed to um, to unpack exactly what Hogan says about the uh, the hip turn and, and what's going on with the hips in the backswing and a little bit on the downswing. Okay, so let's take a quick look in, in the book here and um, we'll get started. So on page 28 and 29, what um, VJ talks about is this move. There's a certain move uh, that he calls performing the missing piece. And in that, it starts about start your backswing by shifting a bit of your weight onto your right foot. This little move, or bump as he calls it, helps you get your body moving and creates momentum. And then when your hands are about waist high, you start to move your hips forward toward your left foot as you start turning them in the backswing. Your head will automatically lower, but do not let it move forward with your hips. Start your downswing by turning the hips counterclockwise as soft or as hard as you want. He says it's that simple. So when we go over and look a little closer at what he terms uh, these three moves are, he says bump, where you bump your hips on the way back, which means moving them slightly to the right, and then turn and move forward. Turn your hips 45 degrees clockwise as you move over your left foot. After that, you then rotate your hips to start the downswing. As you can see here, it almost looks like he's advocating a straightening of the right leg and doesn't talk about that, doesn't say how important it is to make sure that you keep a uh, right leg activated or right leg from getting too, too stiff. Okay, and then you rotate afterwards. So... This is what VJ says is the missing piece. It's, it's something that he feels that uh, wasn't talked about enough um, and that is a key to making sure that you do exactly what Hogan did. So let's take a quick so look at So what VJ is talking about in that uh, excerpt there from his book is he's talking mainly about once you get set up, okay, you give yourself a little bit of a bump to the right, bump to the right, then you start turning your hips. And he says you turn your hips to they're about 45 degrees. And as you're turning your hips, as you get to the top, you start leaning forward or you start moving forward. He says that Hogan does this in his swing altogether. So Hogan talks about a hip turn and then VJ adds this little bump to get you started. And then all of a sudden he talks about moving forward and it's a it's a turn and what I want you to be careful of is that when you're set up that you understand that the right knee does not straighten it does not straighten as you go back all right so it looks like he's advocating a little bit of straightening of the right leg okay now when Hogan talks about keeping the angle of the right leg he does talk about that right leg that right knee as well, staying flexed, okay? But what VJ is talking about here is when you turn and move, you turn and move on the way down so that by the time you're over what uh, John Schley called your turning point, you can then just spin, okay? Now, John talked about this turning point. And that's almost what VJ is saying is, is Hogan turned and got to the turning point. And 
once to that turning point, he then spun, okay? But 20 years ago, what John Schley was advocating is why do you need that side, uh, slide? Why do you need that motion going from right to left throughout the swing? Because Hogan told him what he wanted to do was to try and eliminate that slide because it's a timing issue. If you don't, if you don't slide or move to the forward enough, you're going to hit behind it, or if you move too much. So for the average golfer to time his swing by a slide is exactly what, what BJ is, is trying to do. So let's go back and look and see a little bit of what Hogan and what John says about the hips on the way back as you're making your back swing. Okay, on page 71 of Hogan's book, Five Fundamentals, he says that in, in regards to the hips, Turning the hips too soon is an error countless golfers make, and it's a serious error. He's talking here about starting your swing with the hips, with the idea that the hips turn. It destroys your chance of obtaining the power a correctly integrated swing gives you, which he means by chain action. As you begin the backswing, you must restrain your hips from moving until the turning of the shoulders starts to pull the hips around. So I, I don't see where that bump that, um, that VJ talks about is uh, something that you really want to get involved with in the golf swing. And uh, as Hogan goes on, he says, some prominent golfers advocate making a big turn with the hips. I don't go along with this. If the hips are turned too far around, then you can create no tension in the muscles between the hips and the shoulders. Let's so take a quick Hogan look at that. Hogan talks about once you're in your setup fully set up position, as you make your backswing, as you start the backswing, what goes is the hands, the arms, the shoulders. Nothing in the lower body starts. There is no bump. There is no feeling that you want to bump going. He says that when you start back, you have to make sure that the shoulders, arms, and hands are going first, and they lead the hips. So they're actually giving you that pulling sensation that you want to feel as you go back. But remember, there's no sliding going on. You want to stay pretty stationary. You want to rotate. And once the hips get involved, you want that feeling that the weight is going against the inside of the right foot. You want to make sure you maintain that right knee. You do not want to get to the point where that right knee starts to straighten. Because if the right knee starts to straighten, it allows the hips to go back too far. And if the hips go back too far, what did Hogan say? There is no tension. There is no coiling effect when you use that lower body. You can get to the point where you can turn your hips really far, just like this, which is actually a little bit more than 45 degrees, which is probably about 50, 55. And when you do that, I can stand here all day like this. But if I, go, if I load against the inside of that right foot, on the way back, and I turn my hips to about 45 degrees, I feel that tension. I feel it in my feet, mainly against the inside of the right foot. I feel it against the inside of the right knee as well. But what you want to make sure of is that you allow that to happen. You don't eliminate that because that is part of the coiling effect that Hogan talks about getting to the back swing. Okay? Let's go further. So, in going a little further, he, Hogan says, as the hips turn back to the left, which means on the way down, the turning motion increases their tension. He's getting, talking still about the hips. It is in this increased tension that unwinds the upper part of the body. That is to say, on the way down, the chain action is the hips go first. It unwinds the shoulders, the arms, and the hands in that order, the correct order. It helps the swing so much it makes it almost automatic. Now, what he also went on to say is, when the hips are turned back to the left, this tightens the muscles between the hips and the shoulders just a notch more, something like the way a lug tire, lug, you know, for, for changing a tire. But the maximum tension in the muscles between the hips and the shoulders produces maximum speed. The tighter the tension, the faster the upper body will then move. This is the speed that ultimately produces club head speed, and the club head speed 
is what produces So let's distance. take a look and see what John Schlich says about the hip turn. He says, winding up to develop torque or coil. You wind up against your right hip with the left hip turning around the right hip, which is the pivot point of the hips. Let me show you what that is as well. Taking a look at that, as Hogan talks about the hip turn going back and how important it is to start the lower body movement with that hip feeling, because what it takes is it takes that tension, that coil going back to produce club head speed. So it's a maximum amount of tension and it gives you the maximum amount of club head speed. So what that entails is that when you take the club back and you use proper chain action and you load against the right side and then unload properly, that you're going to have the club head going through the hitting area at its maximum speed possible. Each person develops their own maximum speed by how they can move their hips and how fast they can move their hips. And even in five lessons, Hogan talks about the hips cannot move too fast. So I advocate a lot of people to practice turning their hips very quickly. It's something that you can develop as an exercise. But getting back to what he said about when you start the, with the lower body, remember, if you're at the top of your backswing right here and you start with the lower body, that gives that little added extra tension because you haven't you haven't turned the top yet. You're just turning the bottom towards you. And it, it would look like this if you were to just get at the top of your swing. Say right here, and you start on the way down right here. If we were to rotate back, that's how far you can see it adds a little extra tension or it adds a little extra feeling as if you were taking a, a longer back swing. So that's why one of my pet peeves is people trying to get parallel. I say just get to shoulder high, just get your arms and hands to shoulder high, and then if you rotate the lower body first, it's almost as if you were going shoulder high with that added extra tension by using the lower body first. Now remember, we just went and, and saw that John Schlee talked about the, the coil as well. And what he talked about is that we have a pivot point here on the way back, that's the right hip. The right hip becomes our pivot point and we are turning the left hip around the right hip. So the left hip comes and goes around the right hip, okay? It's one of those things that, that you understand that we have, since we have two legs, we have two pivot points. And if we only had one leg, it would just be one pivot point where we could just rotate. But unfortunately, we have two legs, and in the golf swing, it can get a little complicated. So it's a pivot where the left hand, the left hip turns around the right hip, and then once we got, start on the downswing, it changes the pivot point to the base of the spine over the left heel. So that's another um, session, but what I want you to understand is pick apart these books that come out about Hogan. Match them up to what Hogan says in his book, because remember, in 1985, Hogan said he wouldn't write that book any differently, okay? He was constantly learning, constantly looking for things that uh, would help um, enhance the game, but he didn't really find anything that would change that, okay? But remember, the hips are important on the way back and on the way through. Understanding how they turn and how we move them so as to eliminate that side to side, okay? Hogan did, Hogan did that, but once he learned how it was a timing issue in his slide and how he had to hit 600 balls a day to constantly get that feeling, he said there has to be a better way. And that's when he said with John that once he understood the pivot point was the base of the spine, how can we get the base of the spine over the left heel from start to finish? All right? So that's what we're developing here is more of an understanding of why the base of the spine 
is closer to the left heel to eliminate that lateral movement, not to enhance that lateral movement, like they said in Vijay's book about the secret missing puzzle piece. Okay, hope that helps. Hope that helps you understand that the, the lower body is very important on the way back and very important on the start of the downswing. And we'll see you next time on Hogan's Alley. Thanks.